From the backyard to junior high and on to a high school championship. From the college gridiron to the professional stadium. The improbable turning into the probable. Here is the story of the man they call Mr. Kelly. Kelly Holcomb sees it. He waits for a receiver to come in there, makes the perfect throw. But to the open spaces down the field. Good anticipation and really a perfect safe throw by Kelly Holcomb. Then I thought, well, Lee Flowers is going to knock it down because he spots it pretty quick. But Kelly Holcomb just gets rid of the football so fast. And that is a perfect throw to Tank Poteet. Just good timing by Bruce Arians on the call and a perfect throw by Kelly Holcomb. Hello, everyone. We've caught up with Kelly Holcomb here uh, at his parents' home and uh, got a chance to talk to Kelly and meet his family. And we want you to meet his family tonight, his wife and his two lovely daughters. And Kelly, first of all, we want to say thank you for taking the time out, you and your family, for visiting with us. And i uh, been glad to be able to watch you and so proud of you. And we want to meet your family. That's what we're here in this segment tonight, to meet your family and maybe talk to your wife and your daughters. And uh, I know they're, they're, they're always... Uh, <laughs> setting up and never jumping around you know <laughs> exactly. that's it i don't know if we're i don't know if we're going to get too much cooperation out of this one here she's uh she's kind of got a mind of her own but uh i appreciate it it's nice to, it's nice to come back we come back quite a bit and uh it's where i'm from i mean and um, i'm proud to be in lincoln county and i'm proud to come back and it's uh the year was fun well we're hoping that uh, of course we see much more of kelly holcomb uh, on the on the uh, nfl field and i'm sure that that uh, that's what you're looking at and you've always worked hard to achieve your goal and you're beginning to see some of the fruits of your labor and, and we're just tickled to death about it here in Lincoln County. Let's talk a little bit about your family. Uh, a lot of folks maybe don't realize that you've got a big family and it's growing every day. Yes, it is. It is growing quite a bit. Uh, my wife started off when I got married. She said she wanted four kids, but I think I've halted her at three. We got two now. We got one on the way. So. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully everything goes okay with this pregnancy. Uh, I mean, it started off kind of rough here, but uh, I think this is going to be it. So three is the limit, huh? Okay. Eight is not enough. <laughs> no, that's it. Well, let's, uh, this is Miss Lori Holcomb, uh, the former Lori Watson. And Lori, uh, uh, we got to talk a little bit about uh, how Kelly and, and you met. And, uh, of course, at, at college, at MTSU, uh, y'all both went to college. and. We may even back up and talk a little bit about our high school rivalry here. Uh, for the folks that don't know, uh, what school did you attend? I am an alumni from Riverdale High School. So uh, had a little bit of a rivalry going there. I actually um, was a cheerleader at Riverdale, so I've cheered uh, at the pit here in Lincoln County. So uh, not a stranger to football and, and actually a fan of football. And I know. Uh, even this past year when Riverdale and Lincoln County played, I know you ragged me about Riverdale was going to beat us, and they did. <laughs> and uh, but that was uh, that's okay. It was it was glad to be able to uh, to see a great game. Lincoln County just didn't have enough for Riverdale this year, but maybe next year. Uh, I know you're holding uh, Jalen in your hand. That's your youngest daughter. This is Jalen. Jalen is 20 months old, and this is Kellen, and Kellen's four. Four years old. All right, Kellen. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that if anybody knows Kelly Holcomb, we know, you know, how hard you work is how you got there. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, I, th I think that it was instilled in me with my mother and father to start off with. And then uh, you go with Coach Thompson, he, you know, he gives you a little bit more. And then, then I go to MTSU and, and I thought you'd get away from it a little bit. And then it's instilled in you more with, with Coach Donnelly and Coach, with my quarterback, Coach Coach Robbins. And then... I mean, that's, you look at it, that's the reason why I am where I am today. I mean, coming out of a small school, coming out of MTSU, I mean, uh, we played some pretty good ball there, but I mean, it, in the realistic point of view is it's not widely known for a big football school. So uh, I didn't get drafted. Uh, so, I mean, you better have something and you better have a good work ethic and, and I'm, you know, you take steps in your life and things kind of mold you. And, and I'm just glad that I had the parents and had the coaching uh, along the way to help me develop that work ethic and I mean it's it's definitely why I'm at where I'm at. When he come over to go out for football you know we uh, thought that uh, he really didn't want to play football. I'd worked with him a little bit in baseball before then in the summer and so forth and I talked him into staying on I said you don't know how you're going to grow or develop. I think he weighed 118 pounds when he come over as a ninth grader. 
so then he come on out and he had a good release with the ball. He already knew how to throw the ball fairly well. And uh, he uh, fit in pretty well. And I played him some then as a 10th grader, you know, and that was my last year there. I know we were beating Lee High School, and they had a pretty good football team, and then he threw the touchdown pass there at the last. And the Lee coach was mad after that. Still, every time he sees me, he says, why are you run up that score on us? When I first came here in 1989, uh, I didn't know any of the players. We had a meeting. I had this big, uh, tall, skinny young man said he was going to be a quarterback. So. And I didn't even, I actually didn't catch his name on the first day. And uh, we came out after about a week in the weight room and stuff. We came out one day and uh, I knew who Kelly Holcomb was, that he was a returning player from the previous year for Coach Mattis. And uh, we came out and was going to throw some. And uh, this was in spring of 89. Kelly's going into his junior year. Well, it didn't take me very long to find out his name real quick. Uh, because Kelly, I found out from the start that he was a, a very good competitor, wanted to win. Uh, he ended up uh, starting in 89, went seven, four, came back uh, senior year, went 15 and all. And probably over the 33 years I've been coaching, Kelly uh, is definitely the best high school quarterback that I've had. Well, you know, when I speak of Kelly Holcomb, uh, one, I speak of uh, dedication, I speak of toughness, I speak of commitment. Um, every attribute that you look for in an athlete, uh, every attribute that you look for for a young man that you would like to coach, Kelly Holcomb has all of those. Uh, we signed him out of uh, Lincoln County. Uh, I guess he was somewhere around 155, uh, 62. Uh, signed him for one reason, is that he was tremendously competitive. Uh, came into our uh, university as a true freshman, started the opening ball game. Uh, that's how quickly Kelly Holcomb picked up our system. That's how quickly Kelly Holcomb uh, came in and competed. I first met Kelly uh, when he was a senior in high school. Uh, I recruited him and uh, Bert Talley. And, uh, you know, from a, uh, my experiences with him here at school were nothing but great. Um, I don't believe I've ever met a uh, more competitive uh, self-starter in my entire life. Uh, we've had some uh, great players here. Uh, he certainly falls in that category. Um, anything you might say about him. Um, I don't know, kind of, sounds kind of like a fairy tale. It really does. Um, he just uh, was and is something very, very special. And I'm here today to join you in a conversation with a young man who came up through our ranks and has proven himself at whatever level of challenge that has confronted him on his journey. Some of you know him as number 10, some of you know him as Sleepy, and some of you know him as hometown boy Kelly Holcomb. Kelly, welcome to Breakfast Club. Hey, I appreciate it, Tommy. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. You, uh, you've been busy the last couple of days? Oh, yeah. It's been, uh, it's been like a whirlwind. I mean, I come down here and uh, you try to relax, but I've, I've been going, uh, I'm going to speak to a school actually this morning. And, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it, I mean, it's, uh, it's been a whirlwind the last couple of months. I mean, everybody wants, everybody wants a piece of you. And the biggest word you have to tell them sometimes is no. I mean, that's the hardest thing you have to tell people sometimes. But, I mean, you can be strung out quite a bit and you have to, uh, you know, you still have a family and little girls, you know, so, so it's, uh, sometimes it gets tough. I hope it stays tough for the next 10 years. <laughs> well, exactly. That's what I was, I was telling somebody that uh, the other day. I hope it stays, I hope I stay about 10 more years. And I mean, if you, if I want to do what I want to do, which is be a starting quarterback in the league, it's only going to get more. What I do, if you're saying, I'll trade something. I'd like to present you in the future. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mr. Underwood. Well, Kelly started playing ball down here, I guess, in 1988, 89 and 90, Jimmy. That's and, right. Of course, uh, his career really started, I guess, in the 89 season. He started when he was a junior and went on the 90 season, of course, won the state. And, uh, Kelly was always a bundle of nerves, wasn't he? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was always confident, too, and yeah. always kidding around. Uh, we went to Prattville that year. It took us all day to get there, it seemed like. And uh, 
We just one of the top teams in the state, and Prattville's top team in Alabama, and Kelly's just cool and confident, kidding around, and didn't, didn't bother him at all. Well, I remember riding on the bus with him up to the uh, state championship game in Nashville uh, in 1990, and I sat on the, on the seat with Kelly, and he sat there and just, he was, I was more nervous than he was, and we didn't have anything to do with it. I know, of course, been playing all his life, you know, came from junior high, city junior high, and had a great season there, and it, uh, you know, it's just what he, he liked to do, and he, he made it fun, and it just didn't bother him at all. Oh, yeah. We're proud of Kelly, and we're glad to, his career's blossomed like it has, and uh, and he's gone on to do well in the pro. If anybody's been around Kelly, and, and he's sort of a kindred spirit for me, because he's, he's not only is he competitive, but he can conceptualize. And by that I mean, this youngster has the ability to, to not only react under pressure, but to, to see what's coming next, to actually conceive of it, and, and, and work off of that. And that's what's made him so valuable in the pros, that's what made him so good in, in college, and I'm convinced that's what's going to make him a star with the Cleveland Browns or wherever else he plays, that he's got that ability uh, to play at that next level. We have a lot of great athletes in this country that have as much in the way of physical skills as Kelly Holcomb, but I liken it to the fellow who told me one time that he decided he was going to play golf for a lot of money, and he on the 18th hole he was making a trying to make an 18-foot putt and it had $3,000 on the line and he didn't have $3,000. The dear Lord helped me make this putt and I'll never gamble again. And that putter felt like a dish rag in his hand instead of a steel shaft. Uh, Kelly Holcomb, everything he does is a steel shaft. He's there, he's rock hard, fearless and uh, with his abilities and, with his, and knowing his abilities and seeing the field, the whole field. So I think if that's, that's his greatest asset, his greatest uh, greatest ability is to to react under pressure. He'd be a great Marine. Well, Kelly is, uh, Kelly, first of all, just a great kid. Uh, they don't come, uh, there's no more, there's no one I think that's any more team spirited than Kelly Holcomb. And I first saw him in, at junior high. And I knew then that the young man had the talent to be a, a good uh, field general. And as time wore on, uh, Kelly began to show his uh, leadership abilities as a junior in high school, and then came back as certainly as the senior year. And Kelly was just a, uh, just, he was just a coach on the field. Uh, he, he knew he was thinking way ahead of his team uh, about the down and distance situations and the timeouts, and uh, he always seemed to make the right decision at the right time. And he really never gave a ball game away. He was, uh, he was mentally tough and, uh, and physically tough. And he played, he played uh, with his heart every ball game and then going on into college with uh, Middle Tennessee, Boots Donnelly. Uh, of course, he still has uh, several records there. So uh, his, his record and his play speaks for, stands on its own and speaks for itself. I have. Uh, the utmost respect for the young man and his family, and uh, I wish him well at, with the Cleveland Browns this year. Well, you know, we, we know it takes a lot of hard work in the NFL, and, and we've seen the, the product that you've produced, a, a great quarterback at Cleveland. And, of course, folks that don't know, you started at Tampa Bay, went on to Indianapolis, now at Cleveland. Uh, let's shift back over to Lori and get her perspective from, from a wife's standpoint. Uh, Kelly's got to be... Uh, gone quite a bit obviously working out and, and and training but you know you've been with him for a long time you've supported him throughout his college and now his professional career and it's got to be kind of tough on the wife well it is i get spoiled i guess in the off season because he's at home so much and then it's a drastic change when uh, training camp starts but uh, i think a lot of people think that he's gone actually more than what he really is basically in the season he's you know, it's almost like an eight to five job. He's home every night except on Saturday nights before game time. Um, but uh, he does seem to get more in a uh, focused game type mode during the season that it's uh, a little bit more lax in the off season, which is nice. So, so to put you on the spot, you wouldn't say he neglects you during the season, would you? Or <laughs> <laughs> No, I wouldn't say that. He's, he's, a, he's a great husband and a great father. When he leaves the complex, he leaves football there. And that's even with games. You know, when 
um, after a game when he comes home, he's just happy to get home and see the kids, which is nice. I'm sure there's a lot of the guys that bring it home with them, but he does really good about leaving it there. Now with two young girls in the household, and, and we'll meet part of the other family here in, in the little dog, Colton. I know y'all are very fond of him, but with, with that, you don't make all the road trips. I mean, you make some, I'm, I suppose. No, actually, last year um, I went to Tennessee. That, of course, will put all of our families here. So uh, the girls and I came to Tennessee and then um, for the playoff game. He actually tried to get me to stay in Cleveland, but I went to the playoff game. Uh, I don't think there was any way I was going to miss that one. So, But I, for the most part, I stay at home and watch them on TV. Oh, everything's going. It's going good. I mean, it's uh, last couple of years, ever since I've been in the NFL, when you come, you had to split time between her parents and my parents. And sometimes, I mean, that's – you know, you enjoy that, but I mean, you, you step on each other's toes sometimes. I mean, it's just good to have your own place. I mean, it feels good to uh, to get and get and lay on the couch, like you said, lay in your own place. I mean, it's uh, but but I plan on making Murfreesboro my home. I mean, it's a good. You're not too far from here, and you can come down here anytime you need to. And uh, I think it's a great place to raise our family. You know, the people of Lincoln County, they rah rah and raise cane and holler and go on. They don't know what the person has been through. And uh, I can't imagine it, and, and you know, since I've been in football all my life, it, it has been a brutal road. You know, when Alabama told them they'd probably give him a scholarship if they didn't get so-and-so, and then they got Shula, which is the head coach down there now, that pretty well cut his water off. And then uh, his daddy called me about uh, Middle Tennessee, Boots had lost his senior quarterbacks. This and the other, and I told him that uh, if Boots told him he'd give him a chance, he would give him a chance. And I advised him to go to Middle. Well, later on, Alabama called and offered him a scholarship to come on down there. You know, and of course, uh, Johnny had already told them that they had already decided he was going to Middle. Well, they thought he was crazy. But the way things worked out, he went to middle and he made the team, you know, and made All-American up there and set records and this, that, and other, and took a lot of uh, punishment all the way through, you know, got his jaw broke, played a game with his jaw broken and this, that, and the other. Then after that, it was a ro rough road, you know, going, trying out for the NFL and then had to go over to the World League, play over there. Then down in, I guess it's Tampa Bay, wasn't it? Down there, uh, he felt like he could beat uh, Dilford, <laughs> which Dilford went on and won a World Championship. You know, he he must be fair quarterback. But uh, Kelly has really been through the training that uh, you and I, and I don't think anybody else around Fayetteville realizes the punishment and the grueling, mind-boggling stuff that he has been through, you know. We think we have a little problem sometimes, you know, with this, that, and other. But it's, it's a problem with him every day he gets up. You know, I've had a chance to talk to Kelly Holcomb over the years, but it was when he was the backup quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, and, you know, he had to leave there. He had to because he was never going to play. Peyton Manning never gets hurt, never misses a snap. Bruce Arians was the offensive coordinator along with Tom Moore, the quarterback coach at Indianapolis. He comes over to the Cleveland Browns. He brings Kelly Holcomb because Kelly Holcomb knows the offense. He's looking for a different set of circumstances, maybe to get a chance to play. He's gotten that chance and he has taken advantage of it. Kelly was just such a great competitor, but you wondered if his physical stature was going to allow him to play at another level. But I guess, uh, I, I think uh, in that senior year in high school, uh, football, uh, by the way, I think he could have made it as a professional baseball player too, without any question. I think he could have been a pitcher. Uh, and, and, and although I played football in, in high school and in the, in the Marine Corps, I, I did not really, I was not really a great judge of, of talent like Lewis Thompson or, or Coach Meadows would have been for football. But I guess that game we played Prattville down in, in uh, Prattville, Alabama, the year they were ranked number two and we were number three or four and, uh, and went down on a beautiful autumn night. It was one of those special nights that Kelly led that team back, uh, the Falcons, back to a big victory down there at Prattville. Uh, 
told me then the way he the way he read those defenses and the way he developed that game as it evolved into the fourth quarter told me then that he could play. Uh, Jimmy, you mentioned the Prattville game a while ago. Of course, uh, we went down there, as you said, one of the top-rated teams in Tennessee, and they were in Alabama. And, you know, you don't put much emphasis on those out-of-conference, out-of-state games, but that was a big game for us. Right. It was, it was really kind of just pitting a uh, top team in Tennessee against a top team in Alabama that year, and uh, had a great faller in that year. And, of course, on the way down, you know, we, had, we stopped at uh, – where. Legion Field, field and let the boys see all that, so that got them excited. Right. And uh, it's uh, uh, just uh, I don't know what uh, Pratt Bowl, I think they went on to beat one of the top teams in the state. Of course, and of course in, we won the state in the ball game that, that night. Was they went ahead late in the ball game, and uh, Kelly and directed the team downfield. I remember two clutch catches by Chad Harrison. Uh, and went on in the win to score the touchdown and won the ball game. Right, very close game. It's just this one, probably, I guess, the uh, greatest game that uh, they had that year, even well, counting the states. I think one of the remarks that came out of that was right before we started the drive, they called timeout, and Kelly went over to Coach Thompson. And Coach Thompson was a little more nervous, I think, than the average coach at the time about it. And Kelly told him, calm down, everything was under control. We were going to win the ball game, just take it easy, and we'd go on and win the game, in which we did. So that shows the confidence and, uh, and the stability that, that Kelly brought to football. Right, he was very confident in his abilities, and, 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 and the team knew that, and it, it went over to the team, and of course, just helped him later in life, too. Right. A game at Prattville, Alabama. I never will forget this as long as I coach. Uh, the score was, I want to say it was either tied or we were behind by one point. Well. I was a little nervous on the sidelines, and uh, Chad Harrison, I was trying to get a play in with Chad Harrison, and Kelly Holcomb was standing there, and he was saying, come on, coach, come on, coach. And, uh, you know, we were trying to decide on two or three plays, and he finally, Kelly just finally told me, said, ah, don't worry about it, we're going to go score anyway. And sure enough, I said, okay, you know, go ahead. And uh, I don't know, I was half wishing that he wouldn't do good or we'd go score, but what, what we did went down, and he threw a touchdown pass. Uh, I think it took three or four plays to get in the end zone. But he knew that he was going to take them down the field, and we won the game, 28-21. Uh, and, of course, we went on one state in 90. And I think Kelly was the biggest reason that we did, uh, because he, he was like a coach on the field. Uh, he knew the offense probably better than I did. Uh, you know, could read defenses and just did a real great job for us. I thought I thought that we had a great team this year and you know everything it kind of we kind of peaked at the very the the right time during the playoffs. Uh, I thought that we had a lot of a lot of good games. I thought some were better than others. Some we didn't play as well, but others we played we played good and we played as a team and uh, I'm just glad we could win a state championship. And I'm not sure I ever taught Kelly anything. Uh, he has a real knack uh, for playing the things that we tried to do. Uh, we just tried to concentrate on fundamentals, uh, his feet, um, getting rid of the ball with a tempo. And uh, Lewis had done a great job with him in regard to that already. So it was really not a very uh, hard job. Um, his competitiveness uh, never was a question. Uh, he's just one of those one of those people that uh, winning uh, is the most important thing to him. I don't really believe Kelly's one of those guys that stats mean a whole lot to. Uh, I do know that winning means an awful lot to him. One of our favorites of all time. Uh, enjoy seeing him come back. Uh, he is still today as competitive as he was, uh, and also I may add he is still as headstrong on his commitments, uh, on his beliefs. Uh, just a great individual, uh, comes from a great family, and uh, we, particularly myself, and uh, I'm blessed to have, uh, have been able to coach an athlete as competitive as Kelly Holcomb is. I think if you go out on the field, I try to show that show that this year. I mean, if you go out on the field and you produce, and things will take care of themselves. I try not to get into a talking match. I mean, I'm a pretty confident person, and when I get out there on the field, it's a little bit different. I mean, I'm a you know I'm a little bit different than you know people see me as the calm, 
calm type laid back guy but uh when i get out there on the field it's a little i get i try to get a little aggressive and and uh uh it's a it's it's good at the pittsburgh 32 colton going deep down the sideline touchdown dennis northcutt look at the steelers here comes the safety on a blitz the other safety's in the middle there's nobody to help hank poteet just good timing by bruce Arians on the call you know, Kelly is uh, one of 32 quarterbacks, or say 64 quarterbacks, in the NFL. Uh, when you boil it down, and I, I, at one time I knew the statistics, when a young man graduated from high school, what his chances were of playing college ball, and when he graduated from college, what his chances were of playing pro ball. And, uh, when you multiply 32 teams times 45 players and uh, 55 with the practice squad, um, you know, he's one of few across the United States. And then when you see him on TV sitting in your den here in Fayetteville, Tennessee on Sunday afternoon, you know, your heart just kind of goes out for the, for the boy. And you just swell with pride at each time you see him, whether he's on the sideline or whether he's out on that field, it doesn't make any difference. He's there. And, and we're proud of it. The third play of the playoffs, I yeah. believe it was Kevin Johnson, yeah. and he run 83 yards. Yeah. What, what's that play called? What's that pass called? Uh, that was actually called Scat Right Frisco Right Fox, which means the guy outside runs a nine route. He's trying to take the take the corner out, and the guy inside him runs a runs a, a corner route, um, or kind of a sail, what we call it. He'll bend it out, but uh, they played cover two and the, the corner jammed and he let Kevin Johnson kind of, he didn't really jam him much, he kind of let Kevin get too far down the field and uh, he was trying to set, he was trying to sit right there and watch my sail coming around, he was trying to pick it so I went over top of his head and uh, it was, uh, I mean after, after the play that we came out with with Kevin and, and he was called out of bounds on the sideline right. to go back and we, I think we were third and 15 on right. that play and, play. and uh, yeah, go 80 something yards, I mean that kind of kicked the thing off for us and got us going. Uh, I guess you know the story, perhaps, that uh, when, when, when he finished his college career, notwithstanding his glowing statistics, he was still a somewhat scrawny in the, uh, for, for a college athlete to be thinking about the pros. His dad and I, we decided we wanted him to play the blue-gray game. And there was somebody who got injured, I think, and we, uh, at my phone in my office, I would call and pretend like I was the UPS or some athletic director somewhere and ask about, hey, you got a spot down there. What about that Holcomb kid up there in Middle Tennessee? Have you heard about him? And they said, who? And we'd start these reports about how, how good he was against Nebraska and Florida State uh, in those games that Middle Tennessee played some of those great teams in this country and how he was a stalwart. And uh, we made, I don't know how many calls we made. Johnny Holcomb would tell me, yes, we ought to call this fellow. And I'd call. And, and uh, he's got great parents who support him no end. Uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, his daddy calls him and his mama. Uh, great, great folks and who really care about him uh, and, and really cared about his development. And, but nonetheless, never let him get the big head. And I don't think Kelly would have anyway because he leads by example. But getting in that blue-gray game that he won the MVP on Christmas Day was a great, great uh, time for all of us. And, uh, and right here in this office where this interview is taking place, uh, we uh, I signed him with his agent. Uh, they asked me could I help, and I, I frankly don't do sports agency, and, but I, we found somebody that was outstanding and, uh, and he's done Kelly a good job. And, and uh, from that point on, Kelly has done nothing but uh, take the bull by the horns, and, and he has arisen to every occasion from the playing for the Barcelona Dragons uh, to, to uh, Indianapolis Colts to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've been to all the places to watch him and, and uh, cheer him on even though he wasn't playing a lot or wasn't getting the opportunity. I just knew that he would hang in there and get that opportunity and someday be the player that we now know he is. And <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm crazy too, just like him. <laughs> We always think we can do anything, you know. We can beat anybody and, and all of that. Uh, and I tell him, uh, you know, I asked him about what does he want to do in life later on. I says, do you want to uh, coach when you get out of that? He says, no. I says, would you want to coach in high school? No. Would you want to coach in uh, uh, college? No. And then I asked him what he wanted to do. He, he says, I don't know. 
I think he wants to make enough that he can just play golf. <laughs> well, I know, uh, talk about your competitiveness, I know that uh, you're very competitive in just about anything you do. I know uh, on occasion we've played golf, and I remember one time we played, uh, I, I was up on you the first two or three holes, and I quoted that I was going to talk about it on the radio, and, and then I don't think you talked to me the rest of the round. I think you just bear down and then beat me pretty bad. So uh, I know you're competitive, and well, I'm just joking. I mean, that's, you know, I, I get into a lot of, a lot of competitiveness, situ competitive situations, and, and sometimes my wife gets on me because I get real competitive <laughs> with my little girls. And, and you try not to be. You have to let them win sometimes, <laughs> but, I mean, it's still it's hard sometimes to let them win because you, you are so competitive. But when you get into a game, I mean, you're there to win it, not lose it. You know, that's bad when you're playing Candyland and, you, and you're trying to beat your daughter. I know, it is bad, and it goes to the extreme sometimes. Well, Prath Protection gives Kelly Holcomb the time. It's another double move. It's an out and up by Dennis Northcutt. First, he returns the punt, and look at that throw from Kelly Holcomb. It is perfect. Another good look. Really, and Kelly Holcomb anticipated the throw, let it go as as soon as he could in another beautiful spiral, perfectly. You know, Kelly's one of those kind that he said it didn't really matter how long it took him uh, to make the NFL, he's going to stick it out. But I think, uh, you know, perseverance, uh, being a competitor, and, and being a person that really believes in what he's doing uh, has helped Kelly Holcomb. And uh, I think one day you will see him starting uh, in the NFL. and. Uh, I know watching this year when he came in for couch against uh, uh, Pittsburgh, I mean, he had a, a tremendous game, threw for 430 yards and uh, really looked good. Uh, his receivers dropped a couple. He could have had a few more yards than that and did a great job. I think that anybody that saw him that day knows that he can definitely play in the NFL and uh, hopefully he'll get his shot and I wish him the best. Kelly has now established himself as a name, uh, not only just here in the state of Tennessee, uh, not just back home where we're all proud of him, but he's got a name now that uh, circulates everywhere. And uh, the thing that I want to tell Kelly is to continue to do what Kelly does. Uh, you know, morally, a family, a uh, husband, a uh, friend, ex-athlete, uh, the young man has it all. And uh, we just hope and pray that Kelly continues to, con uh, to move forward. Uh, we hope uh, that Kelly always uh, knows that he's got our support and we're extremely proud of him. Uh, the university is proud of him, the community is proud of him. Uh, by and large, uh, you know, uh, Kelly is just what we need in this world. He is a very solid citizen, a uh, very good person. And uh, as I go back, uh, you know, you, you coach a lot of athletes. Uh, you have a lot of fun coaching a lot of athletes. But from year to year, when people uh, talk about your, your past or when you coach so-and-so, who stands out? Uh, Kelly is one of those that will always uh, be on the tip of your tongue uh, and has nothing to do with just playing of the game. Uh, he is just a solid uh, individual, raised exceptionally well uh, by his mother and father, and uh, by and large, uh, uh, we're very fortunate to, uh, uh, to have coached him. And uh, now today, since he's in the pros, I'm uh, very fortunate to call him a friend now as opposed to an ex-player. But he's a pleasure to be around. He's no different now than he was uh, when he was here in school. Uh, the person is not any different. He's probably a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Tells me he's faster. I don't much see it, but <laughs> that's what he tells me. Uh, uh, he's he's no different. He's he's a uh, he's the type of a person that you would like for your children to grow up and be like. Simply from uh, the way he handles uh, what he needs to handle, uh, business, family, all those kinds of things. Uh, he's a pleasure for me to talk to.
I was in Wilmington, North Carolina not too long ago and was with a couple and some old friends of mine and one of them was from Cleveland, a female, and she told me that she was part of the dog pound. Her brothers had been for years and, and I said, well, who's your favorite quarterback over there? She said, oh, hey, do you know this Kelly Holcomb? I said, he's from my hometown. And oh, she just went crazy. Kelly has developed only because he's played hard and done his thing and kept his mouth shut. Kelly's not a troublemaker. He's not one that's going to fan the flames and he's just going to go out and do his job. And that's what he's done in Cleveland. And I think Butch Davis, the coach out there, finally realizes that Kelly not only can do the job, but he can do it with the support of his teammates, support of the fans, and support of the coaches. Well, that goes a long way. I, I've said a lot of times I'd rather have a 15 Kelly Holcombs than, uh, than some guy that's got the greatest abilities in the world but is always in trouble. Uh, I hate to use the Randy Moss thing, but, you know, and he's a great physical specimen and does great things, but gee whiz, I don't want to see his name and, Every day I read about him, he's, he's, he, the other day he's in trouble. And Kelly's not like that. Kelly just goes out and does his job, and the players really like him. I think that's going to hold him in good stead. I really do uh, in his quest. I tell you what's going to happen, though. I think it's going to make Couch a better player. And in the end, that'll make Cleveland a better team. And in the end, that'll make uh, Kelly Holcomb happy if his team wins. And he's made uh, uh, Couch more competitive. Uh, he makes pretty good money. Real good money. <laughs> Count the guy from Lincoln County. <laughs> and uh, I said, Kelly, you go out there and you work out with your weights and you go over your game plans and you try to keep yourself physically fit and mentally fit and this, that, and the other. But I says, uh, it's a lot better coming back here and start working in these grease traps. <laughs> <laughs> I make it the worst you can do because I used to have guys that want to quit college and you know, I'd try to hire, hire them to plumbers and make them clean out grease straps and everything and get them to go back to college. <laughs> and I tell him that, you know, I said, well, if uh, the first string quarterback stays well, you don't get hit a time. You know, you get to work out and you throw and you make a million dollars. <laughs> And you go home and see mama and the babies and go back. And you're going to last a long time and you're going to have a great retirement, you know. Because he's the type of guy, he's going to hang in there. He's going to fight to the last breath and he's going to learn that thing and he's going to win that thing. He's going to be a winner. If they don't give him a chance there, he'll be a winner somewhere else. I certainly appreciate the people of Lincoln County and the surrounding areas for supporting me. I mean, I'm want to get that starting job but I mean you just have to take what it's given I really I really believe one day that it will happen hopefully it's this year but uh, you never know you, you just got to be patient he has done too much to turn back now <laughs>